what happens when you throw kids into that. Oh, that's, oh man. <laughs> As an entrepreneur, we all know we can work 24 seven. The two biggest things that prevent quality time as a couple are. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Ryan and Mindy show. We're glad that you guys are back and liking all of our videos. Right, you know. what are you doing? <laughs> what are you so today's video is gonna be a little bit different. In the other Ryan and Mindy shows, we've kind of just been giving our thoughts on various subjects that you know people probably find interesting as couples. But this one, we wanna give some marriage advice. And I don't even know that we're really well qualified to do that. I think we're qualified. I mean, we've been married seven years. Seven years. That's a long time. Yep. Still happy most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, seven years will be probably by the time this is posted. Yeah. Our anniversary's coming up. And so, yeah, I mean, now that we're seven years into it, we probably have the authority to be giving marriage advice. Yeah. So for the topic of this video, we really wanted to just talk about how to make time for each other because it's something that people don't really do well, including us. Mm -hmm. We need to work on it. A lot of entrepreneurs, <laughs> I think, struggle with this. For sure. Because as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, we all know we can work 24 seven. When you own the business and when you're working on your social media and your brand, like it literally it doesn't nonstop. turn off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to preface and say that as newlyweds and as a young couple, it was much easier. You were in college. I was just not really having a lot going on. There was a lot of time together and, you know, we we're able to stay at home together. We're going on, you know, dates when we could afford it. I really wasn't on social media at all or my phone or anything. No, not at all. Yeah. So I don't even think you had an Instagram. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Like I said, for those of you who don't know, I never liked social media at all. I hated it. But we did have, we had a lot of time just to enjoy each other. Yeah. And that sure. was always our plan just to have us time before, you know, the kids. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, <laughs> we'll get into that. But yeah, I think the two biggest things that prevent quality time as a couple are number one, careers, and then number two, kids. And we've seen them both, and we've experienced them both. Starting out, I had a baseball career, but ironically, my baseball career was when we got to spend the most time together. Mm -hmm. We'd go play baseball, we'd travel on the road together. Those were like, I feel like, the closest times for sure. Yeah. Because there was no distractions, it was just play baseball, hang out, go hang out. Yep. That was probably one of the best seasons you yeah. know, we've ever had. Once we both transition into careers, you know, me into real estate investing and being an entrepreneur, her into being a teacher, then it becomes much difficult. Right. It was a tough transition. You know, for me and my experience as a teacher, you give everything you have to kids, you know, you love on them and you just do whatever you can throughout the entire day at six in the morning all the way until you you know, I was coaching five at night. You come home and there's just not much else to give. And so that was the struggle that I think we had once the career started. Yeah, because it became a thing where it was like, if teaching's not gonna allow you to be a good wife or whatever you wanna call it, because you're just drained from every day, is like, well, should you be teaching? And then I see it on the other side too, is like being an entrepreneur where it's like, okay, great, I'm building a business. I wanna make this successful for us. I'm gonna work nonstop. And it's like, well, if I'm building this business, but I'm doing non-stop and then I'm not being a good husband, what's the point? Should I be building it the way I'm currently building it or is there another way? Both of us having careers made it tough and I know that many of you watching this video have your own career. Your spouse may have a career. You guys may not be finding time for each other because of your careers. Mm -hmm. What I will say though is that when we got married, we always value God first and our marriage second, no matter what. And we, then careers third. Yeah, careers third. We knew kids would be, you know, whatever it came down to dogs all of this stuff would be after at that time when we first got married we just had to have a little reminder that hey the careers need to be pushed down yeah. because we're each other's firsts or seconds per se yeah we need to value our marriage above everything you know. and yeah so even though it was a tough transition with careers we figured it out mm -hmm. you know eventually she realized okay you know what i need to do whatever i gotta do so that when i come home i can still be a good wife and then i realized all right i gotta do whatever i gotta do so that I can try and leave work at work, you know, and not bring it home with me and, you know, be distracted. What happens when you throw kids into that? 
Oh, then it's, oh man. <laughs> Even once we figure that out, then you do the cool thing and throw kids into the mix. <laughs> Is it even cool? I don't know. <laughs> How does that change the equation? You have a responsibility to keep this little human being alive. <laughs> you don't really have much else to think about other than a baby. And I'll tell you, kids open our eyes tremendously. The one thing I always tell her is like, I seriously don't know how single moms do it. I don't even know how wives or husbands who work, if both people work mm -hmm. and have kids, I don't know how they do it. Like right. it's, it's super hard. She ended up becoming a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. And even with her being staying at home full time, it's still difficult. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, and Ryan has touched on it very briefly, but I had a hard time going from no kids to this kid here. And, and I was solely responsible of taking care of him. And I'll be honest, going from zero to one kid is way harder than going from one to two kids. Yeah, the tough part for me was, I don't really know what she's going through, being a stay-at-home mom for the first time, choosing to give up her career that she had been working for, you know, four years in college, three years at the career, and then it's like, it's done. That was tough for me to really even understand. On top of that, you know, my business and my career was just starting to explode. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, man, how do I even, how do I handle this like new, you know, set of problems with, you know, scaling a business and success? And how do I manage my time now where there are so many people that want my time? You want my time, you know, you're first, but now not only do you, but all these other people. And then my kids too. And that's the hard part is like now, even where it stands, we have two kids who are both both under two, you know, I come home from work and I've been working all day, you know? And for me, I, I enjoy work. Work gives me energy. So it's not like I feel drained from going to work. Maybe I don't work hard enough, but um, <laughs> either way, I feel really good every Maybe day. you're I come... too busy playing ping pong. <laughs> yeah, she'll tell you, like I come home from work and I'm like, do 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 do, like yeah. still hype from like doing something cool that day. He's not <laughs> normal though. I mean, he, yeah. if you know Ryan, mm. he's a go-getter, he's a workhorse. Mm. There is no turning this off. Yeah, I'm pretty certain I've never like once said, no, I can't do it. When I come home, you know, I now know my responsibility is to, you know, hang out with the kids until they go to sleep, essentially. You know, I have to go put my son to sleep. He goes to sleep around eight o'clock. So I'm literally working all day, immediately becoming a dad for the next three hours. Mm -hmm. And then I have to become a husband after that. You know, obviously I'm still a husband. We're all hanging out as a family <laughs> when I get home, but it's not easy because a lot of guys would say, well, when do you have time for you? I, I found a way that for me, that that's what works. I'm not saying that that's that's what you guys got to do. That's one of the reasons I've chosen not to work at all on the weekends. So I don't remember the last time I worked on the weekends. And I get a lot of people who invite me to stuff and they're like, man, Ryan, can you do this with us? Can you do that with us? I'm like, honestly, I'm just hanging out with the family um, this weekend because, you know, I don't really give them what I feel I should be giving them during the week. Yeah. And I'll say, you know, the biggest thing I think for, you know, us wives that stay home or, you know, just wives in general is communication, which I'll be the first to admit, admit that. I'm not the best at, you know, even when we first had James, I was starting to resent him because he got to go out and, you know, go to work <laughs> and do his thing. And I was at home just not even know what I was doing. And, you know, our son had a very, very difficult birth and he was early. And so that, you know, had a whole nother set of challenges that I had to deal with alone. And I never really communicated to him, you know, I need this, this and this. And I remember one day, you know, I was like really upset and um, he just came home maybe from Bible study or something and was just like, okay, what do you need from me? Like, what are, you know, your expectations from me? Because I can see that I'm not meeting them. I can see that you need more. You know, that's something obviously I need to work on is vocalizing, not just expecting like he's going to do it and read my mind. <laughs> he reads a lot of people's minds, actually. He, under, yeah. he knows, you know, a lot what people are thinking most of the time, except for me. As well, far as I mean, think. as far as I know. Yeah. And that's why now he's just happy to do, you know, your dad thing when you get home, because that's what I've told them I needed you know when you get home you know there is some time for yourself but I've been with the kids all day you know I mean us moms we know like as soon as the husband gets through the door we want to say peace out we're out of here <laughs> you know we want to leave the kids and, and be done but you just you have to communicate your needs yeah I think it just comes down to as I've said it before with many things planning you know are you planning what you're supposed to do and so I plan to come home and take care of that yeah and I think really planning is the key to all of this you know not 
not only on like a regular basis, but you gotta be willing to say no to a lot of things. So I don't even tell her how many things I say no to. Like if I said yes to many of the things I would like to do, I wouldn't be home. And so she knows too that if I tell her like, hey, I wanna go to this, she knows that's like actually really important. One of my big goals this year was I wanted to do date night once a week. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic obviously made that pretty difficult, but we were doing a really good job of it. Mm -hmm. And that was actually really cool. A lot of different restaurants we didn't even know existed. Yeah, we, we said basically we can afford to go on really nice dates now, which we never did before this. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we'd go on Valentine's even after we made a lot of money. Yeah. And I said, let's actually enjoy going on a nice date every Friday night. Mm -hmm. Get dressed up, wear, you know, a nice shirt, dress, whatever. We have, Both of our parents are here so they can watch the kids. Yeah, but we only have one kid. Our kid, yeah. At, at time. that time. But I think that's something that's more difficult now to two kids but I want to continue to do and I have to plan it out that way for her sake because you know why because <laughs> I'm a isn't this fitting? I'm a homebody through and through. I don't want to go anywhere ever. I'm a person who spur the mom. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Or, you know, I'll, I'll leave tomorrow if like the opportunity presented itself. But convincing her to do anything <laughs> is like, I literally have to like game plan. Like I'm playing the New England Patriots on Sunday where I'm like, <laughs> how am I going to phrase this so that I have the best chance of getting a favorable answer? <laughs> and you wonder why my sales skills are really good. It's because I got to negotiate with her. I'm the toughest brick to move. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think date night is an amazing thing that you guys should do as couples. If you can do it once a week, I think that's amazing. If you can go twice a month, I think that's what I would say the minimum. Get out of the house. Um, Get ice cream. Get ice cream <laughs> away from your kids, by the way. You got to get time to yourselves and see if one of your friends will watch the kids, your parents, your whoever, babysitter. somebody will help you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got to hire a babysitter, go work extra hard to afford the babysitter or save up because it's important. Mm -hmm. The one thing I'll say too is, you know, understanding where you struggle. For me, the struggle is just turning off. How do I not look at my phone? How do I not think about new ideas? How do I not do anything other than just be present with my family? That that is my most difficult thing to do. And he has to constantly be thinking about that because my love language is quality time. When any of those things are happening, I feel that it's not quality. You know, I'm not getting his, we call it 100% attention. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we joke like, can I just at least get 80% today? <laughs> I'll give you 80, that, no more. We won't talk about your love language. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that. Um, so it's, it's, get, touch. It's, it's getting physical. If you guys don't even know what we're talking about with love languages, mm -hmm. definitely go read it. It's called yeah. The Five Love Languages. Uh, we'll link to it below. Amazing book. Incredible. You're wondering why you might be off on like, man, I'm, I'm doing what I think I should be doing. And mm -hmm. she don't think that. Probably because you're speaking your love language and you don't know hers. And you might be surprised that you think you know your love language is something and it's totally different. I mean, I remember taking, there's like a little test at the end of the book and I thought it was gifts. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I like, I thought I liked gifts and it was not even close. That was probably one of the last ones and I realized that I just enjoyed the time. Well, and your birthday's coming up. I'm like, what do you want? Like, just tell me what you want. This is literally every year, guys. <laughs> this is not like a new occurrence. And every time, she won't give me anything. And it's literally never once mattered what I got her. I could have got her some expensive, some cheap. It wouldn't have mattered. If you think that just buying someone something is their love language because that's like America's version of love. Yeah, you're probably spending money you don't need to. Yeah. But um, unless you know for sure then that their love language is gifts. Yeah. And there are people who's like that. And so yeah. if you don't give okay. them a gift, they feel unloved because you didn't think about, yes. you know, the gift that they wanted. There's a lot of people like that. It's just thankfully my wife's not that. <laughs> actually, though, it actually is worse for me anyways, because <laughs> I would rather give her a gift and be done with it. Yeah. <laughs> and but you know she knows the most valuable thing is my time mm -hmm. and that's way costlier than a gift <laughs> so <laughs> i am expensive yeah she's super expensive that is just you know showing how much i love spending time with my husband and how much he neglects me because i don't get the time <laughs> he asked me you know what like you said what do you want for your birthday i think last year and i was like i just want to spend a day with you without your phone <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> but we know where we're lacking. So, you know, he says he's lacking in the being present part. And I know that I'm lacking in just getting out, <laughs> basically, being getting out of my comfort zone. I'm yeah. an introvert. Or I'll not. tell you what you are. So you are fine once you're out. Right, right, right. Like once you're out, you're I'm having a great you're time. Having a great time. Yeah. Every single time it was like hammering nails and like pulling <laughs> teeth to get her to that point. But once I'm there, I'm like, babe, we should do this more often. Yeah. This is great. I'm having the best time. You know, I'll talk to anybody. Yeah. I don't care. And I'm like, do you realize I told you this like every time <laughs> I want you to go out? I'm like, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a great time. And then. Uh. But anyways, guys, so I think for this, this week's marriage advice, definitely plan, plan out events, you know, spend the weekdays mm -hmm. on a certain type of schedule, the weekends, however it is, and come together and make that plan. You know, don't just say, well, okay, I'm going to do this. That should be good. But it's like, no, like what, what's good for our family? You know, I'm not asking you to spend 24 hours with me seven days a week. Like, mm. Who wants to do that? <laughs> no, no, we wouldn't be all happy-go-lucky right now if that was the case. <laughs> Second thing, becoming aware of, you know, your weaknesses, where you lack. Right. And learning each other's love languages. That's the third. That's the, That's third the bonus thing. tip yeah. for sure. Anyways, guys, we appreciate you for watching us. If you haven't already, I don't know why you wouldn't, but <laughs> give us the like. Go subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Follow us both on all the socials. If there's else? anything you want marriage advice in, comment below. Yeah, if you like this segment, definitely comment below. Show us some love. We need more topics. We're yeah. running out of things to talk about yeah we do need marriage topics i can come up with like real estate topics and <laughs> like i'll pump out seven a week these ones i'm like all right what's these this? are tough because you know people want to know and they i think you guys like the ryan and mindy show hopefully yeah uh, but we just don't know what to talk about anymore yeah so make sure you comment below until next time take care